Meet the man who rode the wave of summer 2020 to global fame and fortune. Who's a fixture on your mom's favorite morning shows. Who's hailed by Oprah as a moral genius. Ibram X. Kendi has been schooling a nation on how to be an anti-racist. Professor Ibram X. Kendi. I don't understand how and why people continue to normalize black death, but, but then others would then say it's because black lives don't matter. Kendi, a professor at Boston University, has sold millions of books, including The Anti-Racist Baby, a great guide for prepubescent radicals. There's nothing more inspiring to hear a young child express anti-racist ideas. If you see a problem with the way your parents are thinking or, or doing, to, to recognize that you probably have a better ability to change them than anyone on earth. Everyone everywhere is assuring you this man's a prophet, that he's a vital voice of the next great civil rights struggle. And then you hear him speak. You hear him articulate his beliefs, and he's self-debunking. He's self-owning. He's an overhyped, incoherent lightweight. Let's start here. We have been led to believe that the most intelligent students, or even faculty, are those who students who know the most. Okay, we're ready for something profound. But what if we re reimagined intelligence as those students who have the greatest desire to know? And what if we can measure that? This gets even more incoherent when you consider who Kendi is talking to. The dean of undergraduates at Harvard University. But the dean does what everyone does when confronted with Kendi's shtick. Nod and affirm. Because that's what good allies do. Let's look at another core concept of Kendi's, inequity. This is the centerpiece of his whole analysis of American race relations. We have racial inequities all around us. Kendi defines inequity as any disparity in racial representation in any part of life. Racial inequity is when two or more racial groups are not standing on approximately equal footing. By equal footing, Kendi means exactly proportional representation across all racial groups. Any variation, and you've got inequity. And inequity is always and everywhere the product of racism. A racist policy is any measure that produces or sustains racial inequity between racial groups. Kendi's inequity is purely outcomes-based. Does not matter how we got to a particular racial outcome. All that matters is that the outcome is unequal. If a policy is leading to inequity, then it's racist. For Kendi, anti-racism is any policy that produces these inequities, that brings the racial outcomes back into balance. Anti-racist. In, in contrast, has a meaning, a meaning of somebody who views the racial groups as equals, mm -hmm. someone who is pressing for policies that creates racial equity. Anti-racist policies yield racial equity. And Kendi has a grand vision for how to achieve his equity in America. He's proposed creating a new federal department of anti-racism, empowered to step in and regulate away inequities. I mean, this is kindergarten level thinking. Of course, racial inequities can have causes other than racism. I mean, consider that the average black woman is more likely to attend college than the average white man. Is that a function of racism? Or that the suicide rate for white men is triple that of black men. Is that a function of racism? Or that Asian Americans have the highest per household wealth in the country. Is that a function of racism? Of course not. But Kendi's equity analysis is a blunt instrument blunt to the point of absurdity. Kendi also has a tricky relationship with capitalism. He says he doesn't like it. So I don't know how someone can truly be anti-racist and a supporter of capitalism. Now, Kendi's analysis is not particularly deep. He's an academic. He just needs to say the word Marx once or twice, and you know. Marx recognized the birth of the conjoined twins. Capitalism is essentially racist. Racism is essentially capitalist. A 
but we're not done. The conjoined twins are two sides of the same destructive body. Just get, just get one more. To love capitalism is to end up loving racism. To love racism is to end up loving capitalism. They were birthed together from the same unnatural causes, and they shall one day die together from unnatural causes. On the other hand, Kendi seems to really like capitalism. That $20,000 price tag means the district paid Ibrahim Kendi more than $300 a minute. Kendi spoke on how racism impacts students' learning. He was gifted $10 million, no strings attached, from tech giant Jack Dorsey. He has special anti-racist branded trading cards. He scored a Netflix deal. Babies are taught to be racist or anti-racist. There's no neutrality. Take these nine steps to make equity a reality. And he's got a new kid's book. It's called Goodnight Racism. For someone who's theoretically opposed to capitalism, he sure doesn't seem to mind reaping its rewards. Kendi's not a genius. He's not civil rights 2.0. He's a fraud. An intellectual lightweight who's milking gullible elites for a payday while doing nothing for the suffering of actual black people. But to his credit, he has certainly exposed institutional racism. Institutional racism and all the legacy media operations propping him up. They've decided not to apply even basic logic to him, not to interrogate him even a little. They've decided to lower their standards because of the color of his skin. I mean, what else would you call that?